In this video, I'd like to share my views on what I consider to be the number one most important thing to do in order to succeed as a musician. Now, first of all, a big disclaimer. It's not like I consider my own music career to be super successful or it's not like I have everything figured out myself, but I have been a working musician for most of my adult life and I've had the opportunity to observe many of my colleagues and peers for many years, many of them all the way back to music college. And I have seen a pattern in who is making it and who is not. So all the musicians I know that I consider to be successful, they all have the thing in common that they have a really strong brand and a strong voice. And the sooner you can figure out what's your brand and your voice, the better off you'll be. As you can see, I'm out hiking today. And this is actually one of my favorite activities. It really helps you clear your mind, which is important for this topic we're gonna discuss today. I'm actually heading up to that mountain you can see behind me there. It's called Sørlen and it's not a super high mountain by Norwegian standards, but it's by far the highest in this region, so the view from the top is pretty nice. Kind of spectacular. Almost expect the guys from Lord of the Rings to show up at any moment. Now maybe vlogging on the mountain wasn't such a good idea after all. <laughs> So this lake is called Skarkjenna and I'll have a quick rest here before I take on the top. When you have a clear brand, it's easier for organizers and promoters to book you and it's easier for other musicians to collaborate with you and it's easier for potential fans to get what you're all about. It's not like your brand needs to be super specific. You don't need to be a classical soloist playing only baroque repertoire or a traditional fiddler playing music from only one specific valley. You might as well be, for example, a bass player who can play many different genres, can read music well and is very professional and have that whole commercial music thing going. And that would be a very clear brand as well. I've known a lot of aspiring musicians who tend to be all over the place and they're doing different things and they're in different bands and they're just doing whatever comes up really. And while it's definitely possible to be at the right place at the right time, you are depending on a much greater degree of luck that way. Whereas if you have your thing really figured out, it's really only hard work that stands between you and success. All right, so it's time to climb this thing now. That's where we're going. So it's been many years since the last time I was here. And it's been too long. I used to grow up in this area, but I haven't lived there in 15 years until I came back last year. It's been really great being close to this again. It's just something about this part of the country. I did actually live in Ireland for a couple of years, but the climate there didn't really speak to me. And the mountains weren't very impressive either. <laughs> So, really nice. Turns out this was a perfect day to climb this mountain. And there's almost no wind here, so I could have shot the whole vlog up here. Now, finding your voice can be easier said than done. And some people know from a very early age what they want to do, but others take many years to figure it out. For example, myself, all the years from I essentially quit my jazz career when I was 23 until I hit 30. Nothing happened in my music career, basically. I got by by playing various gigs, but nothing really led to anything, and none of the bands I were in really got anywhere. And it wasn't until I really embraced my niche, so to speak, that things really started to happen. Now, for many of us, 
it does take a lot of experimentation and trying different things just to see what's our thing. But I do think at a certain point you do need to commit and stick to a path for at least a few years until you're a more established figure. Then you can possibly evolve your brand and doing different things. For example, John Mayer was a really established artist in the pop genre before he started doing more blues and R&B stuff. And this is actually something I see in many of the artists that I admire, that they're able to actually evolve their musical path rather than going off in totally different directions. I hope I'm making sense. By the way, I'm sure there are easier ways to make money. <laughs> so as I said, this is really, really nice and I wish I could stay up here all week. But unfortunately, I need to get back down. All right, that was it. Hope you found it interesting. As I've said earlier, I'll be continuing these weekly vlogs over the summer. And if I get 100,000 subscribers by then, I might consider doing some more. So um, make sure to like and subscribe and click that little bell thing. That'll be good. Next week, I have a special guest on the vlog. He doesn't really know it himself yet, but I'm sure it will be very nice. So um, hope to see you then. Take care.